for those of you struggling with the reality that the United States, under Title 28, 3,215A, is a corporation, I implore you to uh, go do some research, which Mr. Anonymous pointed out to me, showing that all 50 state seals are actually registered up in Canada, which means if you're operating underneath that sigil, you are required under the power, uh, not the Power of Appointment Act, the um, uh, Foreign Registration Act of 1938, amended in 1939, to register as a foreign agent. If you're working underneath that sigil, you are not working uh, necessarily for the American people, but for a foreign corporation that is found in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. Okay. So, uh, where to go from here? Let's see where we stopped. All right. The reason BCs and notary certificates are ignored in the court is because they are not approved. See Federal Reserve, uh, uh, Fed RC, uh, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 44 and Title 28 USC 1739. They need to be authenticated, not apostilled. All right. The court, the court is the judge. The clerk is not. Please excuse the correction. I never like to disagree with my colleagues, so forgive me for uh, setting the record straight for the common good. But this group is committed to dis, uh, dispelling the long list of flawed patriot philosophy that has uh, focused our attention on defective remedies. The notion that the clerk is the court is one of those uh, fallacies. It is based on subtle defects in logic and insufficient research. Like many others, uh, like many other delusions, once uttered, it spreads like a plague in a community desperate for an answer. First of all, by definition, both courts of record and incorporated courts consist of judges. Just read the statutes. Corporate courts, Title 28, USC, Section 1, uh, Number of Justices, Quorum. The Supreme Court of the United States shall consist of a Chief Justice of the United States and eight associate judges, uh, eight asso associate justices any six of whom shall co constitute a quorum. Pennsylvania Revised Statute, Title 42, Section 501, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of Pennsylvania shall consist of a Chief Justice of Pennsylvania and six associates, courts of record. Title 28, USC 132, B. Each district court shall consist of a district a district judge or judges for the district in regular activity service, regular active service shall consist of pretty much ends the argument regardless of how uh, committed we are to our own logic. Well, we need to go review Justice Scalia's uh, evaluation of the word shall. Okay. Secondly, as to logic, a bank, uh, a bank teller has all the same fiduciary responsibilities that the member, that the member cited. Nonetheless, the bank is the fiduciary of record. Thirdly, we have forgotten that when a judge gives an instruction to a clerk, the clerk will almost always obey. Lastly, the reality is that the, that when a court withholds our set off, the judge's trust is the party against whose account the taxable termination must be assessed if we are to have satisfaction. Again, I apologize for any embarrassment this may cause. I would prefer that a bigger lesson is that if we all begin to examine our beliefs and the uttering of the, our colleagues in, in the groups and blogs, emails and seminars, we might not uh, still be using the same failed methods and worse, advocating them to newbies at the groups just because someone has a website or advocates a protocol does not make them an authority. Judge's Oath. Not exactly sure what you mean, but an oath is not what you have been told. It's a trustee's formal acceptance of his appointment and the trust directives. A fanciful version of an acceptance that appears at the end of a trust agreement. In the public trust, the directives are all of the uh, statutes, case law, and regulations. It, it, it's his confession of his true status and his agreement to perform. As you have seen, it can be used in many ways. 
Some have tried to use it uh, to solidify the general contract into specific into a specific contract. Most people cite the oath out of the desperation before out of desperation before going down in flames. A simple accept, a simple acceptance on an authenticated copy of the oath converts the judge from administrative to ministerial duty. That can be helpful if you understand the significance. The last time I did that, I was a plaintiff and the judge was replaced overnight. Then I made a tactical error based upon faulty research and blew the case. That's how we learn. A trustee's acceptance and oath, oath has potential benefit when expressing the, the true trust or converting it into a security. In that case, I would actually refer to it as your acceptance of trusteeship or words to that effect. As long as the court presumes to be the beneficiary, the judge can and likely will ignore the statutes and rules and his oath. A couple of years ago, I came across this on uh, one of the forums. Uh, he treats everything he's an ex-banker as a creditor and loves to use the commercial law as as much as you guys love to use the common law. He used his philosophy successfully in California for having a license for not having a license plate. Appeared with no lawyer, not famous, just himself. This is his key, Your Honor. I plead guilty to the facts, not to the controversy not the controversy and would like to affect payment immediately judge case dismissed you may go this essentially is a demur to the charge without the affidavit it works because there are no facts and the entire process is defective on its face there is something in commercial law called acceptance for honor that is right and even if the judge said the facts you would uh, say yes the facts he most likely would say, what facts? Your response would be, correct, sir. I never call a judge your honor. I have not been presented nor been served with any facts in this case. I respectfully ask you all to think about your leverage, both in how you handle matters and in credit. I sincerely believe that we can win these matters much more often with a creditor viewpoint instead of a debtor one. We would never want to call a judge sir, which is derived from sire, rather than a term of respect, sir, a higher officer, and of course, sire is associated with the father, a king, or a king. It is acceptable to call a call it judge, as you are really addressing judge Tim Terrible trustee, who is acting on behalf of the judge Tim Terrible trust. That's uh, that's why they call him, call them actors. In this way, it's clear who is liable. Well then, judge, I will instruct my fiduciary to charge the liability to your public trust. Of course, once they see you are in command, it's, it doesn't matter what you call them. Okay, so from reading through the post, we should have learned that all securities issued against the estate, although maybe not issued by us, are issued by us via assumed, presumed, expressed, implied power of attorney. My logic would dictate that there are two parallel issues. One, deal with the security that, that get issued i.e. traffic tickets, criminal charges, complaint, uh, summons, warrants, and two, the original issue being the a BC in Canada, the United States, social security number in the US, being the token used by the public to ledger the securities against our estate. As per stated goal of this group, to move comprehension forward, let's keep them separate and expand on each. One, we have learned public trust. See Uniform Trust Code in file section uh, can appoint judge as trustee, etc. under the Power of Appointment Act of 1951. Two, involves claiming the estate. UCC 8, entitlement holder. UCC 8 deals with securities. Uh, and you'll always want to go to the definitions first in UCC 8, UCC 9, whatever you decide to go into in the UCC, make sure to go into the definitions first so you comprehend what they're talking about. The UCC 8 entitlement holder uses proxy to evidence claim, involves four documents. The Secretary of Treasury, U.S. Governor 2 of IMF, and MOF in California, Governor 2 of IMF. 
has to be held by IMF, who else is lending money to every corporate government in the planet? And where did they get that money credit from? Seems to me once you complete number two, number one almost takes care of itself. I can appreciate XXX is in trouble and YYY got this issue and ZZZ is losing his home and I myself, blah, 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 not to appear unsympathetic, but millions of people lose their homes and go to jail and XXX, none of which relates to the state stated goal of this group. Moving forward, comprehension of the remedy. Seems to me, if everyone on this group had a clear and uh, precise comprehension of number two, comprehension, not templates, all other issues would resolve themselves. I am a firm believer that it is time the world changes for those who know who they are and have enough faith to make that change. So, in the split of cracking this nut, seems to me if everyone so inclined focused on number two, the journey would be easier, quicker. So, what do we know so far? Educated guess. B2B1 need claim. Go read UCC Article 8, comprehend what an entitlement holder is. B2B2. Probably need to give notice, UCC, B2B3, hmm, living man does not belong in commerce, cannot be on a UCC, ever wonder why they only do all caps, need a proxy, B2B4, need to assert, enforce, control, claim, send to, to second proxy, CRA or IRS, I would suggest each of us go read Galastinias, G-A-L-A-T-I-A-N-S, for King's James Commerce Version. Look around, figure, figure out if you are A, uh, being treated like a slave, or B, under the control of, the, of a governor in every state province, C, in bondage to the elements of this earth, or uh, D, have received the adoption of the sun yet. Notice, you will not be given the adoption of the sun, but rather that we might receive the adoption of the of sons. The gift to you is the opportunity. The reset is up to you. Seems like someone, uh, someone who is responsible for themselves and in control of their commerce and inheritance reach the age of majority would man up and take care of the issue themselves. If we, t if we take these B2B discussion points, complete the subsequent, uh, the, s complete the sequence and expand on each one till they are fully comprehended, seems like we will have met the mandate of this group and give everyone the tools to take care of their own issues. For those that are still looking for a quick fix, someone else to do it, you might receive the adoption of sons when you are ready. I would even suggest a different thread for each B2B point to expand for those less uh, less read to provide clarity, study resource, etc. Create new B2B thread as each new step reveals itself. I can see you've gotten the picture quite ha handily. One thing though, once you have number two, that's when it gets uh, that's when it gets busy resolving all the issues, pursuing your funds, and even tending to cashing out. Perry Mason and the ministerial judge. Here's something simple. You can tell the judge respectfully that you would like him to act in a ministerial capacity or the, for the rest of the case and to hear your evidence. Then show him what you've got, hopefully including a copy of the banker's ledger showing they enter the note as an asset. Then we get the banker, uh, the bank officer on the stand and ask him if the bank records will show they performed by giving you credit to the full value of the note. This is talking about a foreclosure. If you know uh, the issue, you can establish all the evidence you need by questioning the bank bank's officer. Let them build the case for you. You start with simple questions and get them to stick their foot in their mouth. So the bank gave consideration on the note. And once they open the door, you move in over the plaintiff's attorney objections. If I had a securitization exam, Done, and it shows from the SEC website the QSIP numbers, numbers, and that there's no cumulative uh, realized loss. And I showed 
that the service, uh, the servicer who has me in foreclosure does not have standing because it's the mother company that is the securitizer and I filed uh, this into the case, will I be in trouble? It's a PSA pros uh, prospectus. You are correct to be concerned. Filing truth into a public case is a contempt. I have a friend who filed an affidavit explaining such truth in a lowly credit card case, and he was immediately arrested by a small brigade. Think of it this way. How do criminals and politicians, yes, I know, react when confronted with the, the possibility of being exposed? Ask Jimmy Hoffa. Why would we think a judge is any different? Do you think they want security and tax fraud placed into the record? Conclusion. We address their trustee obligation and breach breaches privately. Yes, it can be helpful to have a, the QSIPs on hand, but it's not essential if we can say... These are your choices, and if you don't perform, then I will retain a, retain all title to the securities, and this guy here with all right uh, credentials is going to, with all the right credentials, is going to file everything on your behalf as an assessment against your bond. One error patriots have been making for years is trying to introduce evidence of fraud into a case instead of holding the trustee of record liable for their failures to perform. The first problem is obvious. They already know they are screwing you. It's what they do. It's what they enjoy. They have long ago uh, rationalized the shame, the shame. It's why they fight to the teeth to hold office. Secondly, the evidence has not been made admissible per Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 44 and Title 28 U.S.C. 1739. The difference is this. Enraging them by filing evidence of their own misdeeds in the public case or scaring them senseless, senseless by serving evidence privately of your ability to collect for the misdeeds you know they commit, by the way, if you don't have the that ability and knowledge, then you shouldn't even get uh, even get near the words trust, security, and estate. They will fry your ass. These sort of issues go straight to the heart of how and why we do things, rather than individual situations. This basic lack of perception as to how the other side thinks explains why patriots keep uh, getting clobbered for speaking the truth. When they have stolen the children and are using them as leverage, it's okay to play the trustee. There are many uh, times we sit back and uh, bide our time playing the trustee, signing a check, accepting a traffic ticket, playing the defendant in a court case. When do we play the trustee? When it is to the benefit of the beneficiary, and we are controlling the beneficiary. Translation, when it's, when it's to our benefit, if they have the kids, we can choose to jump through the hoops until they they are returned. Once they are back, it's time to reclaim our securities and give them their orders. Someone who's really skilled might meet uh, with the judge in chambers and set him straight. When judges see that you know you who you are, you know what to do, and you are uh, operating on conviction and not just belief, they have been known to comply and move on. People see the BC as being, the birth certificate as being straightforward. Actually, there are many possible scenarios. I could talk to you for hours about it, depending on what you're trying to do. It may or may not need the, to be authenticated. We don't, uh, we don't for T process. But I think the original question was about using it as evidence in a court. That's a different ball game. The significance of the BC is not the document, but its value as evidence of your priority claim. P.S. They don't authenticate seals. They authenticate signatures. One of the things I recognize, the protocol you mentioned, so I took the liberty of confronting, uh, confirming at the DOT by your email. I understand what you were trying to do. The problem is, is it doesn't parallel what happens inside the agency, which is why most of the estaters are still struggling with liens. You might find the estate posting uh, I left 
some time ago. It might be helpful. Your mentor should be able to explain the tea process to you. Although I understand the new crop tend to make themselves strategically unavailable until you grease their palm. Be aware that some of uh, some of them are operating on partial information and recycling old, not necessarily bad information. The con- uh, the county is not necessary uh, necessary to develop a maritime lien. In fact, it can destroy it. But once you progress to the T uh, process. Treasury, uh, treasury process, it can be helpful if you want certified copies for some reason. You can also use triple SIG process to have a probate court certify it. And those titles, uh, uh, those title tid- tidbits didn't even require Ching Ching. What we are concentrating on is reclaiming our securities as taught to us by the very people who do the enforcement. So everything we do in in everything that so everything we send in is transparent, completely justified, and quite workable. This way we don't fear a visit, we welcome it. It can be lonely living on the land as one's uh, one man nation estate. Once you understand trust, securities, and the beauty of tax law when commanded from the proper station, then freedom becomes redefined from from a constant battle to prove we are not an owner tenant debtor to simply operate the me- uh, the mechanism already in place by paying and seeking recoupment for certain securities annually mechanisms like public law 7310 as to your question, I'm not sure I followed it, sorry, but let me observe that there's not much one can do sui juris. When acting as a tenant with respect to the, to a landlord, a tenant is a trustee on the trust indenture known as a rental agreement or a lease. He has most of his uh, most of the obligations to perform. The beauty of operating in commerce knowledgeably is that uh, one can operate as trustee or beneficiary at will. It is to your benefit to play the trustee when you sign a check, pay the rent, or even sign a traffic ticket because you control the beneficiary yourself and will enjoy the benefits of those actions and can have satisfaction later upon recoupment. Those who eventually know this and understand how to accomplish it tend to quickly lose their taste for sovereignty in favor of living life to the fullest while the, uh, while the father is so inclined. So, I can stand on the, on the lawn next to my private mailbox in front of my house with no 911 number on it waiting for the uh, SWAT team, or I can go about life knowing how to control my environment like the Rockefellers do. In a world where bankers uh, have bled the masses for thousands of years, the latter seems pretty good until I met the creator face to face. Do you really understand the system? Most do not. What I'm about to disclose is at the core of our various remedies and why so many patriots' processes fail. How would you define House Joint Resolution 192? Did House Joint Resolution 192 replace payment with discharge, give us a credit economy, and outlaw outlaw repayment in lawful money? Of course. But the people who keep the books and enforce the laws think otherwise, and they are right, at least where it counts in the public intuition institutions that can provide our remedy. Public Law 7310. Public Law 7310, a.k.a. House Joint Resolution 192, a.k.a. 48 Stat 112, installed barter and even exchange as the official economic system in the United States Federal Corporation. If you give me something, I have to give you something of equal value, and vice versa. In this society, that something is not the house, the car, or the groceries. That something is a cash receipt issued under the Financial Accounting Standards Board, Standard 9 to 5. See file section to download and generally accepted accounting principles. The receipt is exchanged for a security in the form of a check, a Federal Reserve note, or a credit card receipt. The same is true in court. It's all about exchanging securities. When they charge the defendant as a presumed trustee that failed to uphold the public trust, statutes, and codes, 
it is automatically liable since it must give them a security of equal value in return. They are levying the estate under uh, Public Law 7310. Public Law 7310 gives them the statutory right to access the estate as surety for the Social Security straw man account that was created from it. The straw man is Lucifer's version of Adam being charged for its sins for buying and selling as described in chapter 13 of Revelations. Like the indictment, a warrant or summons is also an assessment, a security identifying the payee, them, the payer, the straw man. The term maximum prison time, the amount, penal sum, and the date. Doesn't that make perfect sense? Once we, t once we make it known that we hold the priority security interest in all the securities, indictment, warrant, appearance bond, summons, complaint, etc., everything changes in our favor. Since they are assessing the straw man, our debtor, to charge the bill to the estate account, our primary debtor, then they revert to being the trustee by definition since they receive the deposit of the security in the court's record when they opened the case account and, and issued a case number and a case bond. Nonetheless, we still owe them a security under Public Law 7310, and you thought it was about the gold. So when we appear privately in the court of record without which their corporate court cannot exist, as the grantor and beneficiary of the trust they created when they de uh, deposited our indictment security in their books, when we appear as the actual depositor of record and give them a payment instrument properly drawn by the proper parties and a directive to process, now they have the obligation to perform as trustees under Public Law 7310. And if they do not, then they, not us, are in breach of the trust and subject to foreclosure. Foreclosure of what? Foreclosure of their bonds. And in violation of Public Law 7310 by having failed to execute the mandatory even exchange and having failed to reduce the public debt upon demand. This means that they owe the taxes on the gain and transfer taxes under IRC 2611 and 12 for having terminated our interest in our security and taxes on the sale of the case bond. Once you understand House Joint Resolution 192, then you also understand the accounting philosophies by which the bookkeeping agencies operate the accounts. Caution. I offer this information on background. It is powerful and it is dangerous. Do not act on this meager email summary if you expose the fraud in open court or in a filing or or if you attack the judge's revenue stream, they will crush you like a maggot. All right, so words of wisdom here. Really have to study before you do this and know who you are and never back down once you start. If you do something like this and you even show a hinkling of weakness, and this is from life's experiences, I'll tell you this right now. I have beaten the shit out of so many bullies it's not even funny, and I'm not even that big of a guy. I'm just mean as fuck. And... uh I can't tell you how many bullies that I've watched pick on people. And I go, oh, you like to fight? I fucking love fighting. And I just fucking grab them right by their throat and kick, punch them right in their chops. Just fucking harder than shit. And it would amaze you how many bullies wilt like a fucking daisy in the heat when you grab them by their fucking testicles and pick them up off the ground and slam them to the ground. It's just amazing how the toughest guy in the room all of a sudden just, he just wilts like a little flower. I don't want to fight. I don't. Oh, you want to pick on people that can't defend themselves. You want to look like a badass, huh? Well, now you've met somebody who likes to fight, win, lose, or draw. I don't give a shit because I actually enjoy physical combat. I like it. All right. It makes me feel alive. It makes my adrenaline rush. All right. And I enjoy that shit. So the same thing applies with these, these judges. Most of them will try and lord over you until they realize that you're not going to back down. The second you act like you're going to back down, they're going to pummel the shit out of you. But if you don't back down, you go in there strong with conviction. You know that the good Lord has your back and that you fully comprehend what I'm articulating to you here. These people will 
bend over and do what they're supposed to be doing. Not because they're intimidated by you, but because it is the right thing to do, all right? They are charged with the duty as trustees to make sure that these securities are taken care of. They are your transfer agent and they are charged with a specific performance, all right? And if they don't perform, we're gonna put the big demon on the little demon. And this is why you'll see that I like the IRS so much. Now, I never used to like the IRS until I met Mr. Anonymous. When I met Mr. Anonymous, he started showing me things about the IRS and I go, wait a minute. Like my whole life, I was always told like, the IRS is this horrible organization and, and, you know, if they ever send you a letter to run like hell or ignore it or whatever, um, or, or make right with it really quick and never challenge them or anything like that. And he says, when you really understand what the IRS is doing, you will fucking love them, Derek. They will be your best friends. Now, one of my other mentors, James Bethel, he told me, Derek, at some point, you will start having fun with this. And when you start having fun with this, this is when you will become dangerous. And they will recognize that you're enjoying yourself and they will soon stop screwing with you because it comes to a point where they can lose everything, including their life. They can go to prison for the rest of their life for fucking with you. And they know that you're getting closer because you're having way too much fun. And he was right, because when I first started down this path, I had a lot of animosity. I didn't like these people. I, let's just face it, I still don't like most of these assholes because I know what they're doing to my fellow brothers and sisters, which really pisses me off. But I can't save the world, all right? In the good book, it tells us uh, 144,000, uh, 12, 12,000 tribes of 144,000 people will actually know the truth. When you think of the population of 7 billion people in the world, that isn't very many people that will actually know what I'm talking about, all right? They're few and far between. And we're very fortunate to have a number of very articulate people who continue to communicate with me, even though I'm being very public about what I'm doing. They don't like it, but at the same time, um, you know, they're still helping me along, which is fantastic. And I have a wonderful proposal coming up real soon, which is going to be cool if it actually works. We'll just see. Uh, anyway, so I don't get too far off topic. Okay. Is it possible that patriots can accept information on background without causing themselves additional misery? All versions of the Bible warned us about uh, the money changers, mammon, and disagreeing with the enemies. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good roadmap. I view the world as a giant laboratory where the father permitted Lucifer to roam to allow his children to exercise and nurture their power of free will and choice. Reading a single instructional booklet for an IRS uh, for an IRS form tells us how far people have strayed from faith and cognitive reasoning. Where is I am supposed to do all of that instead of play with my kids? The father gave us his spirit in son in his son, intending that he volunteer to be butchered to provide us a clean slate and pathway home. And still, very few accept the invitation. You want to know uh, why I started this group? For me, controlling commerce is my way of overturning the money changers. Isn't that what we are doing? And manifesting my promise to him to bring souls into the kingdom. The, uh, basically being a fisher of man. This is my way of reaching out. Let us all pray for forgiveness and faith. This is why no one of this on this site will slander their brother by uh, brothers um, or any of the others dedicated servants that shared the insight that led so many to their uh, present level of sophistication. So much confusion about the, the, the state. So, so easy to uh, rectify. So much confusion about the state. So, uh, about the estate. So easy to rectify. There are two estates: the public, evidenced by the short uh, form, and the private estate. The private estate consists of your inheritance from the Creator. Period. The body He bequeathed to your care. The air it requires to sustain life, the earth beneath your feet, the food it bears, your reproductive abilities, and your possessions and holdings. As you have seen your whole life, the corporate, uh, the corporation has used uh, the misnomer, missing, uh, misname, 
scam to constitute a mirror image of everything in, in your private estate. They created religious corporations to supplant your church, incorporated courts to replace the de jure courts of record, uh, demise, uh, dimes and quarters to replace the, uh, the dimes and quarters uh, quarter dollars, coins defined by the uh, nation coinage, uh, the National Coinage Act of 1792. The United States, to supplement the United States of America, and even fictional persons, straw men, to supplement men and women. Similarly, they created a public estate to supplant the private estate, supplant to take the place of. A public estate is uh, devised from three events. The imprinting of an infant's footprints on a hospital notice that the infant was born at, the loca at that location, which is presumed to be, the, be a pledge of the infant's future labor, Form 1, Number B. The second event is the certification of the infant's pledge for the purpose of issuing securities. This results in a long-form certificate of birth, which is executed by, a re by the state registrar of an incorporated county and serves to transmit the pledge into the public domain by way of process known as certification. Sounds similar? Isn't certification the uh, process used by Bank of America to securitize your credit card application, your pledge by transferring it to a FIA card service, which transfers it to a BA Master Credit Card Trust 2, which issues certificates backed by the application, the pledge, so that BA Credit Card Trust and can issue BA series notes to investors. See the flowchart in groups file section in which BOA uh, graphs these transactions from its SEC 424B5 prospectus. The third event is the creation of an account on the books of the Department of Treasury to accommodate the deposits of the certificate of birth into the accounts. The sole purpose of the accounts is to lever leverage issue securities backed by the infant's future labor, the same way BOA issues BA uh, series notes. This is the series of events that creates the mirror image public estate. Whereas the private estate is your divine inheritance, the public estate consists of all accounts and securities, including currency, which are used to leverage your future labor by issuing securities against the treasury birth account. Is it any wonder this group is called Reclaim Your Securities? The first such uh, uh, derivative security is the birth bond, which is res uh, represented notice noticed in the public by a short uh, form birth certificate and exchange with the Fed uh, for currency. This exchange of securities bonds for Federal Reserve notes securities, whether at birth or during so-called bailout of 2008, is how currency is placed in circulation. Another derivative of the BC Trust estate is the Social Security account, which is also used to leverage securities, namely the Social Security bond that are represented by the uh, routing and bond number listed on the back of the Social Security card. In summary, the public estate is com uh, comprised of the BC Trust account and all accounts and securities derived thereby, everything in the public which has been derived from the infant's pledge. As with all the other mis uh, misnomered corporate uh, sub substitutes, the public estate is a mirror image of the private estate, which, that, with that knowledge, can you guess from whom it's derived? If the father is the source of the private estate, can the public estate arise from anything other than Lucifer? Now, you know why the public estate contains all of life's sinful temptations, algamated into a matrix of liability, idolization, and demonic accounting double entry bookkeeping, where everything adds up to zero every day. How do you know that anything I've said is true? Once you understand securities and trust, it is not self, is it not self-evident? 
If an entire day's transactions total zero on the books of every financial institution in the country, do you need any more proof that House Joint Resolution 192 installed a system of even exchange barter a as I dis uh, disclosed in my last posting, and that the problem is that you are not getting that even exchange to which you are entitled as an entitlement holder. How do I know that the deposits of the infant's pledge into the public book uh, books is diabolical because the same demonic scheme of false presumption is used by every U.S. court to presume they have deposit or pledge into their books to issue for-profit case bonds before we appear in the building because every U.S. bank uses the scheme to hijack our credit for the issuance of of for-profit notes to investors without ever disclosing the theft of our credit. Because Papa Bush had the audacity to lecture Enron about the evils of securitization when he was CEO of the largest securitization entity in the history of the world. Who else but Lucifer could be uh, could have designed such a system? Is it any wonder that the Christ overturned the money changers' tables? By the way, though I am uh, proud to be nothing more than a child of the Creator, the private estate is useless for dealing with the public securities and trust which are derived from the birth certificate pledge. This is why your estate letter failed. You have been taught to proudly hide your head in the sand with respect to understanding the commercial world around you. But don't be surprised if Lucifer decides to mess around with you when you see your behind stick when he sees your behind sticking out of the sand. Have you ever heard of recording the BC in the tax assessor's office? Recording the BC in the tax assessor's office won't get you anything. If such recording is even uh, is even supported, since uh, real property claims go through the commercial registry (UCC) in the commercial chambers, it is the claim against the birth certificate, original security, properly perfected, that moves the public to follow your directives. Understanding the accounting is key to understanding the public scam and the remedy to it. It's in the accounting that your securities get robbed. I just spent a couple of days reviewing that uh, that with someone. It was it was like watching her let her breath out after a long wait. No need asking a court to answer what we already know. I'd rather hold them accountable for the exchange, taxes, at or return. Those postings were not mine, uh, so please do not. Uh, excuse me, that's a different deal. Do, do, do. We'll leave it at that. That's uh, a pretty good run of the mill. Do, do, do. Let me see here. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, again, this information is hearsay to you guys. It's uh, hearsay to me, but I know where it's coming from. It is coming from a defector from the IRS, somebody who grew a conscience and decided to start helping people because he was tired of watching them spin their wheels. And uh, I call him a defector uh, only because they were never supposed to divulge this information to people. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Do your studies. He's already uh, said time and time again he will not give templates. He will not uh, show you how to fill out the proper IRS forms, um, but he keeps alluding to them over and over and over again uh, for processes that need to be done in order to correct your status. Um, and he keeps going over it over and over again. So let's talk about something here. Who are the people in your state that are dealing with the public side of the trust, the public ledger system. Let's just talk about that just briefly. I'm just going to give you a little insight because this comes from my studies, not from necessarily what's being said here. You have the governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, the ex officio council, which deals with the, uh, the ex officio council is the attorney general, the governor, the secretary of state, and the state auditor for taxes, right? And you have the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, and the IRS are two separate entities. 
you need to figure out which one is which, which one is public, which one is private, all right? And it might behoove you to put them on notice of who you are and what your intentions are. And that doesn't necessarily require a form from the IRS. Um, some statements of facts, maybe, maybe, just maybe, when you do your statements of facts and you use a notary, you might uh, you might go to the Secretary of State and authenticate the signatures. Mm-hmm, 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 just maybe. I don't know, food for thought. Maybe you might go p- place it on a <clears throat> miscellaneous land record filing or miscellaneous filing after you go to the Secretary of State. Just maybe. Uh, remember, the public and private don't commingle. I'm not asking you to go commingle anything. I'm just saying that it might behoove you to create your own record now that you're on this path and discovering who you are. Anyway, with that said, this last bit of information I just dropped is phenomenal. And I hope you go and eat the meat and throw the bone. Grab what's great and throw the rest. Greetings from South Florida, Derek Gonzalez. I need your help, please. I'm headed out that way, actually, South Florida, here in a couple days. I'll be out there for a little bit, so maybe we can meet up. But I'm coming out there to meet one of my other mentors, so we could talk privately about some things. Um, But anyway, I'll keep you in mind while I'm out that direction. Uh, We'll talk to you guys soon.